boys we are delighted about your very good performance and the coupe song was a very nice selection so uh, right about now I request that the participants in the second cohort take on their seats and Ms. Fifi will carry on from there thank you very much the affirmative and negative participants in the second cohort take on their seats and Ms. Fifi will carry on from there Thank you very much. The affirmative and negative participants in the second cohort take on their seats and Ms. Fifi will carry on from there. Thank you very much. The affirmative and negative participants in the second cohort take on their seats and Ms. Fifi. We now welcome the Alternative Strategies team. Please come up to the podium and take your seats. The Alternative Strategy team. Excuse me, we will need the second microphone.
Welcome. Unfortunately, we might not be able to start right away. We are still awaiting for one of the judges. If anyone has his telephone number, please give him a call. Okay, he is on his way. Welcome to the second round of the debate. On my left, I have the affirmative team, and on my right, I have the alternative trust strategy team. We will just go over the guidelines of the timing. The first two speakers from each side will have eight minutes, four minutes of protected time at the beginning, and two minutes of protected time at the end. The rest of the speakers will have six minutes, two minutes protected time at the beginning, and two minutes protected time at the end. I suggest that when you hear the sound bell, it will indicate that it is time for unprotected time. 
look to your right or look to your left. If there's any point of information, I kindly request that you allow the speaker to ask a question or give the point of information. And now, let us begin. I welcome the Secretary General from the Affirmative Team. Okay, good evening, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Apologies. Um, so, as the affirmative team, I am the Secretary General. We have our Deputy Secretary General, the Chairperson of the Council of Ministers, the Amika Skurai, and the Council of the Con Ministers. Sorry. So, to start on with the motion, it states that. But this house affirms that border management is a prerequisite for stability and social and economic development for the East African region and that it is a concern for the youth. I think it will be right if we start with the definitions of prerequisite so that we don't end up misfiring for both our sex. So prerequisite means something that must be done in order to gain something. And for pre preliminary, it means the preparation for the main matter. Here I will give an analogy where a prerequisite is if you want to prepare a meal, the kitchen should be there, the kitchen should be clean, um, the, the, the cooker should be working. For pre preliminary, it will require you have the recipes and the, the, and the food and the ingredients that are ready. So border management is a prerequisite for social and economic development and stability within the region. Introducing my team, the Secretary General, the Deputy Secretary General will tackle on, on the economic part of it, where it's the trade and the transboundary logistics. He'll talk about the three freedoms and the two rights and the common market protocol. Yes, and the, also the improvement of trade and the transboundary boundary logistics. For the second speaker, we have the um, that, that, that was the second speaker. For the third speaker, we have the, uh, the, chairperson of the, the chairperson of the Council of Ministers, where he'll talk on the logistics. He'll quote the various protocols and the articles, where he will speak on the annexes and the, the articles that provide for the economic development. Then for the Amika Skarai, she'll, who is Chelsea, she'll talk on the the human security part of it, where we have the life expectancy issues, we have the literacy levels, and for the final, Derek, he'll sum it all up and show you why border management is a prerequisite. I will go on to my first point, where for border, ma border management provides awareness and sensitization for so um, it is essential for awareness to be for awareness to be done. And this is given through the border management. They have training for the border police posts who are there. This is where they can inter integrate the young people as the as these young people, especially the ones living along the community, the borders, the local communities. There, they will really be important on the young people. Um, on to my second argument on that is that this would help have an effective, an effective investment in, when, when realizing the border management, because border management entails border security and border controls. So awareness and, and sensitization is important for this. So in some of the techniques that I used, yeah. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Yes. Uh, Madam Secretary General, in respect to our motion before this Honorable House, you're not explaining to us 
the prerequisite conditions and the essence of border management as the only issue that must be adopted in this house to ensure there is maximum social uh, economic uh, st st stability within the youth. And in doing so, is that really a pressing social need that there are no other strategic plans that can be achieved to ensure there is maximum social economic development among the youth? Thank you. Um, to answer your question, regarding to the motion that you've been given where border management is the prerequisite, prerequisite doesn't mean that it's the only solution, but it has to have been done first so as to go to these other issues, which I'm sure you'll mention, which I would like to tell you there will be pre preliminary solutions there. That's how I will answer that question. Yeah, to my second point. I would, go, I would like to refer to the trans, sorry, to the transnational boundary resources that are shared within the East African states. Here I will quote the various institutions that we have in the East African community. We have the, we have the Lake Victoria Basin Commission and the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization. And yeah. Yes. So for, for these institutions that have been placed, they have gone to pro provide solutions, for example, coordinating the, the intervention on the lake and the basins and also for sustainable utilization of the lake. Yeah, we can have an example for the contestion between in the Migingo Island where Lake Victoria is a shared resource. We saw that the Uganda, the three countries, Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya, they were almost at the brink of war. That was in 2009 over the contention of, of the ownership of Migingo Island. But we saw that in 2008, November 2008, we saw the various ministers in the fisheries ministries coming together and providing solutions to curb that, um, that impending danger where they, they suggested to in place beacons around the, the boundaries to show a clear demarcation because that can be a real problem. So and um, so we see that border management is really important because as the world is opening up and we we need to realize the the full impact of globalization. We'll, we'll, we we have to know that migration flows will be high. And il now that means that illicit human trafficking and the migrant smuggling will also increase. So we should actually put uh, investment, we should invest there and use our young people, especially those living at the community borders. I think it will not be fair for us to not mention that anything regarding to border management, we should also put into consideration the local communities living around the border areas, their education, their awareness, giving them the required resources, giving them the, the input and all that kind of support that they need. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary General. And now we welcome the first Attorney General from the Alternative Strategy Team. Honorable judges, uh, permit me to first, as a precursor to my submission, introduce my ABO team. And at my immediate right, we have the lovely lady from Rwanda. In our group, we've branded her a smiling lady. Kindly smile to, uh, the, to the judges just to note uh, you, Madam Anje Mukutoni. And then in her immediate right, too, we have Mafunda Kombo, she is from Zanzibar. She is the second attorney, and then from on her immediate uh, right too is uh, Blair. He's from Uganda, a very legal young scholar. And lastly, we have Mugisha Jean Claude. He's from Burundi. Our last, our 
second last, our second uh, Attorney General. Having done that, uh, Honorable Judges, before us is a motion which in itself states that the House believes that border management is a prerequisite for stability and socioeconomic development for ESC community and a concern for the youth. I appreciate with great humility the presentation by the Secretary General, but in our view, we believe that it was in itself, for lack of better word, an insult to this forum. We believe as alternatives that indeed as though border management should be an issue, but it should not be an issue to be addressed before this Honorable House. Honorable judges, the question then would be, is border management really a pressing social issue that without it there can be no socio-economic development and socio-economic stability within our youths? That is the only question that if we indeed answer, then we should not really be seated here today. And in that regard is the reason why Alternative is coming up with the better strategic plans that need to be established and need to be implemented by, member, by the party states, the member states to the ESC, according to the obligation under Article 5, in read together with under Article 120, of, uh, 120, 120 sub Article 3 of the ESC. Article 120 provides for certain obligations, and when read together with Article 123C, provides for social welfare, which includes the youth. The Secretary General in her presentation did not even mention the youth in her presentation, and that is a, an insult to the, to the motion of the debate. What are the, the real causes of border management? When coming up with the policies in border management, we should tend to cure or rather prevent the menace. The menace is not within our borders. The menace is within the party states. What are the root problems of border or human smuggling within our borders? In answering that question, honorable judges, the African Youth Charter provides for the root or the drives for human smuggling within our borders. Why do people flee illegally from their, from their indigenous states? If we really answer this question and we are going to, then we'll find the solutions towards this project in, in achieving the socioeconomic development. So one of the four reasons that, provide, that makes youth and even the smuggled person to go to other party states illegally includes one, unemployment. The Bureau of Statistics in Tanzania, in Rwanda, in Burundi provides that roughly 28 to 30 percent of the population which are employed are youth. Honorable judges, 28 percent in a, a society where the youth are the driving point of the future economic stab stability is not just a number. 28 is not just a number. And we must come up Point of information. Oh. Thank you very much, the Attorney General. My question is, what category of people dominates the population in East Africa? Thank you. Thank you very much for your easy question. As per the, as per the ILO report on unemployment, and in cutting out the statistics, they included the population within the East Africa and as per 2063, it is, it is, uh, it is uh, preempted that we'll have roughly 70 million, Kenya, 70 million people within the East Africa. And in unemployment, they say that 70% of unemployed population are youth within 15 to 35. And remember, youth as defined by ESC includes female and male within that margin of, that margin of years. And to proceed with my... Yes. Um, thank you. I would like to correct you when you mentioned that it's a dis disgrace that I didn't even mention the youth. For our forums, we 
you guys, for, for the alternative team, providing the alternative strategies, but for you guys, you are all attorney generals. For our team, we have different roles, and I have explained them, and they will be explained, especially the youth, because they are a big concern. And then when you talked about unemployment, if you look at the one of the core issues when talking about an, unemployment, you should also look at the influx of refugees that we have. Yes. Honorable judges, just to answer my able secretary general, not to mention youth as a secretary gen as a secretary general, permit me, honorable judges, for kind for your kind permission, allow me to say it's still a disgrace. Because honorable secretary general, in your presentation, you are able to state to us that some prerequisites within the kitchen can be the only elaborative scheme for your presentation, but you can't mention the youth, and that is the sole reason why we as Honorable Ambassadors are here. So to proceed, Honorable Judges, as our, my able partners will come, they'll state to you what are these common, common goals or common proposals or common policies that we need to put in place to ensure that our youths are empowered so that they can have sustainable development within their party state in order to, and to, in order to ensure to curb the need to move to other states illegally to get the opportunities which they are not getting into within their state. And in doing so, honorable judges, as the lead attorney, I propose that one, it's time we start walking the talk. As party states, they're indeed policies to ensure that there is social economic development within our youth. And they include the unitary funds that are put in place. The implementation is key towards driving social economic development and stability within our youth. How are then these are going to be achieved? We urge our party states to ensure that they meet their legal obligations to ensure that they include policies within their member states or within the individual states to ensure that there is maximum sustainable legal framework that will provide our youth with job opportunities, with proper health care, with proper sanitization. On, and, and just to finish, honorable judges, allow me to allow me welcome my, my second, or allow me to give the, the floor back to the, the moderator. Thank you. I hand at the high table and the mass at large. Good afternoon. I'm hereby to affirm on the motion which stated by the following considerations. First, first improvement of trade trans and transboundary movement and also re related logistics. Transboundary movement, this means the movement of goods and people across the borders, whereby there was in the introduction of one-stop boundary post, which it was an act of East African community of 2016. This act was introduced in order to ease in and, sim and, redu and simplify the movement of people and goods across the borders, and also to make the youth whom they are moving from one country to another to move easily and with a cheaper price also to in of getting the travel documents. Also, on also on combating corruption whereby it reduced the paperwork activities. Paperwork activities, they are, they are in one way or another increasing corruption activities across the borders, but now it's more electronic. You can trace it back through the historical path, the construction of Kenya-Uganda railway path by the colonialists. Now there is the construction of Uganda-Tanzania pipeline which can move the, the, the oil from Uganda to Tanga border to be exported outside. Also, it can trace on the construction of the road, which was inaugurated in 2016, the arusha holili Voy Road, which is 240 kilometers to, tra to connect the Arusha, Tanzania with Voy in Kenya for, so as to move the goods and services and, and people. Also, just on the Eastern African Community Act of the on, on common market and movement of people and goods, Article 2 on the 
movement of goods. Thank you so much, Deputy Sec General Secretary. Uh, I would like to ask you, how are you thinking the transborder movement and the border management? Because you brought out some terms that we are not aware of before. Thank you. Transborder movement means, and the logistic, means the, the management of goods which they are being transported across the countries. Maybe the imported containers with, with a country like Uganda or Rwanda, the landlocked countries, when they're imported, they, at the, at, upon reaching at the borders, they have to pay the custom duties. That's the transboundary movement because they, they are not consumed or used in the country like Kenya or Tanzania, hence they are going to be used in the other country, which is Rwanda, Burundi, or Uganda. Also, meaning on, the, on, the, on that part, on the logistic notes, means all goods and services which are transported with logistic on the logistic part. Also on the second point, on it enhances building of, of resilient infrastructures which promotes good development of industries and sustainable, develop, sustainable development which also promotes youth to participate in different activities. Let's say construction of roads. Youth are employed as engineers, manual workers, and and also the operators of the, of the machines. All those activities give the youth em employment activity, hence they can earn income. And on that, on that same, same post, that the, the building of those, those resilient infrastructures also led to the construction of this one-stop one border post, whereby we have 12, 12 of them. We have 12 of them in East Africa and the other three are pending. Soon they'll operate. There is the opening of the other part, which was opened the, by, on the 1st of December by the Honorable President, Dr. John Pombe Joseph Magufuli, with his counterpart, Uhuru Kenyatta, so as to ease in the movement of goods and services from all the parts. On top of it, we can speak of how to combat transborder organized crimes and trafficking of illegal, illegal drugs. You can say the, there's a case of illegal drugs like the cut, which is it's in a, another word is called Mira. It's illegal in Tanzania, but legal in Kenya. Though, so youth in Kenya, whom they want che cheaper money, they bring it in Tanzania, which, while in Tanzania it's illegal. And hence, most all of them, they enter into problems while, when they are caught, because it, in Kenya, it's legalized. In Tanzania, it's illegal. All that, when the borders are managed, they'll, they'll stop moving, transporting those illegal things because they are not allowed in the, in the other country. Also, it will help to reduce the cases of terrorism and human trafficking, which all of them, they can help to bring a good and better place and make East Africa a good and better place for, for the development of other sectors such as health and education, well, all, while all of them are fully managed. Also, we can look on, on the other parts of, of movement of people and how to get to access to the Thank you. Uh, thank you, Deputy Secretary General. You are coming to tell us the border management include movement of people and goods. Whereas we are facing the subject of human smuggling, and I cannot say that border management is the main procedure to reach the socioeconomic development, the stability of a country in 
uh, sustainable way. Because we have to, to identify first what are many causes of those movements on borders. We have to get some uh, reply as corruption in the countries, in member state countries. This corruption is driving a, a lack of opportunities of YAF. For example, when is a, a time of uh, job offer, there are some who are escaped by those those jobs because in the country it lays much corruption and then they, dis they despair and they they decide to flee to flee their countries and they go abroad to to seek for jobs and to seek for safe safety or the security but we are addressing this issue in managing borders. And uh, we can continue saying that public services are inequally provided because of corruption. Social protection isn't going to get its financial means because there are greedy persons who are taking, uh, okay? Yes, um, I would like to make it clear that we are not contesting the fact that um, corruption um, in the, the government and um, unemployment, that they are not um, factors that lead to all this. But for the, but if, if we look at the, where, where we get the core reasons, for example, when talking about the unemployment and the, and the low opportunities, we know that there are, there are policies that have been placed to by, by, the, by the EAC to fight these things. But when they get to the, to the national level, they are either refuted or something like that. Why, why would that happen? Because there is mistrust among the, the, the communities. And the main, the, where the main contention comes in is along, especially along the border points and the territorial, the territorial st strategy. So I think looking at if we if we if we fix the border management and how we could, we could help all the all the partner states um, have a shared investment, share our our our. Is it a question yes. or is there a contribution? It's a question. Yes. Okay, can you continue? We know at this time, corruption is creating a gap between the rich and the poor, between those persons who are with disabilities. And this is caused by integrity in which reign in countries. For example, I can identify some practice which are related to um, illicit financial flows as corruption, as we, we say it in major, tax havens, tax evasion, smuggling, tax avoidance, and those, they affect the macroeconomic aspects that are going to boost economy of countries. All those factors are pushing countries to be in the and the development instead of getting involved and enjoying um, opportunities of integration. And then there is another problem related to instability of countries which are making conflicts. And then people of those countries are, are fleeing their countries. And we're going to say that border management is needed to stay the socioeconomic development, this cannot sound well because you cannot 
limit people traveling, searching, where condition must be better than what it is expected in his country. Uh, finally, border management is, is not a prerequisite. What is prerequisite should be to stay a good governance, stability in the countries, and even fight against the corruption, because we have seen that it is the main driver of fleeing movement of labor force of countries which are going to give the, the to, to make the countries become richer and richer. And then when you let movement of people and the, all, all people fleeing their countries, you can find all countries where is corruption, where is instability, where is poverty, where there isn't any comfort, you can find all the people just going away, searching for the better situation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Second Attorney General. Let me remind the speakers um, to limit their questions to 30 seconds or to their responses. Um, I also would like to let you know that you're not confined within these four walls of this podium. You can as well move around the stage if you, wa if you want to. Let us welcome the third speaker from the affirmative team. Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to the second half of today's debate. Before I descend onto my burden as the chairperson of the committee, I will respond to the arguments that were presented by the attorney generals from the alternative side. Their argument from the first attorney general was about having maximum legal framework that will prioritize the youth. But the question is, don't we have enough and sufficient legal framework right now in the country? And this has existed for so long but has not yielded any results. Therefore, we cannot cling onto the same measure that has failed to yield results as a nation, as a community, to achieve or to expect different results. Ladies and gentlemen, give the same attorney general to whom I posed the question as, who, which category of people dominates the population in East Africa? He tried to answer the question but it was not sufficient. The question, the answer to this question is that we have the youth as the majority people in East Africa. Therefore, that requires them to be prioritized and they are more concerned with the border management question. Furthermore, the second attorney general seems to have had two arguments that were key to his speech. One is corruption. And we say that corruption, we do not dispute that corruption is not a problem in East Africa. It is a problem, but it does not precede border management in requiring attention. Ladies and gentlemen, they also go ahead to say that we have issues like tax evasion and all tax offenses. But this constitutes part of the border management problem. Tax evasion has been exercised at the customs center of the borders of different nations. That requires us to tackle the border management question. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, I will now descend onto the burden I have as the chairperson. Ladies and gentlemen, according to the World Migration Report of 2018, East Africa has the largest increase in migration globally, and this is attributed to the refugee crisis since 2013. The mixed migration flux includes refugees, asylum seekers, displaced people, or even other people that are seeking employment in different countries. Now, in 1927, the Treaty for East Africa Cooperation establishing the East African community collapsed. It was officially dissolved in that year. Why? This was because there was lack of political will by different countries, and there were different levels of development by other countries, and also there was lack of adequate and harmonized policies to foster development in these countries. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll answer two questions in my submission. One is the question of why do we need border management to proceed over other factors that may require or foster development? Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you very much. My question is, please show us how border <coughs> management is going to directly correlate with uh, economic and social development, uh, paying attention to the youth. How do they benefit directly? 
Thank you very much. That is exactly what I was descending onto. I was going to show you how exactly border management affects the youth and why it is their main concern. Ladies and gentlemen, the first question is why are the youth concerned with border management? Why should they be prioritized in this aspect? This is because African continent right now is undergoing profound demographic changes which are characterized by decline in fertility, fertility, mortality and child mortality rates and rapid population growth. Right now, about 60% of the population in Africa constitutes of the youth. This can be mirrored in the East African community circumstance. We have over 72% of the 150 million of the people in East Africa being the youth. This shows you who is who makes part great part of the population in this country and therefore who is more concerned by the effects or the impact of the border management question in this region ladies and gentlemen furthermore the youth the youth move both within and outside the countries yes please thank you i want to ask some one question border management border management can contribute in in tax in, in tax justice how can, can you manage the resources collected at borders and, and if it is a country of corrupted uh, representative? Thank you very much. I'll answer your question in my last minute of submission. Ladies and gentlemen, before I was interrupted, I was saying that the youth constitute the greatest part of the, of the nation, and therefore they are the people that are enterprising in this East African community. They are the people with the greatest number of business startups in the East African region. So therefore, they are the people that should be prioritized and the people that are affected by border management. Now, pursuant to Article 2, 3, and 4 of the Customs Market Protocol in Africa, common market protocol in, in East Africa. It shows that we should have free movement of goods, persons, and labor in East African region. Now, how do we achieve that? It is by having proper and harmonized border management policies and framework that can easily and ably permit these people to exercise their freedoms and rights as granted by these protocols. We cannot discuss the question or any affair about East African community in isolation of the protocols. Why? Because the protocols are the essence and they give East African community, the agenda and program of what should be achieved. If we discuss anything outside the protocols of the East African community, we are discussing in a vacuum and that argument shall not stand in this debate. Ladies and gentlemen, descending onto the aspect of custom of common market protocol, this be, it is defined as a, a, a formation where partner states of regional economic community agree among themselves to operate as a single market with free movement of people, services, labor, and capital. Now, the only, this can only be achieved if we have a proper framework that can regulate and accommodate the movement of the people, of the goods, and of the labor as stipulated in the Common Market Protocols, Articles 2, 3, and 4. Ladies and gentlemen, pursuant to Article 123 of the East African Community Treaty, it shows that all East African countries must cooperate politically. That brings into context the issue of having a political federation, which happens to be the end goal on the list of East African community. Therefore, we have to consider the aspects of having the end goal in mind as we move forth to tackle any issues that may affect socioeconomic perspective in East Africa. I beg to rest my case. Thank you very much, Ntambi Michael Blair is my name, third attorney general from the alternative team. Panel of judges, tonight we are faced with a resolution that first of all needs to be contextualized if any team is to work away victor. Contextualizing it, focusing on three specific areas. One, <clears throat> migrant smuggling. Two, corruption. Three, social economic development, but drawing a direct linkage on the youth being at the center stage of all that. And without further ado, I would like to show us why this debate needs direction and why 
the team proposition has not provided what would make them win as of this word. We must create economic opportunities, build a culture of entrepreneurship, get people to take responsibility for improving their lives rather than putting them in a position where they sit back in, a, <clears throat> where they sit back in their poverty and blame others for it. Paul Kagame, His Excellency, the President of Rwanda, say those words. He also doubles as the chairperson of the African Union. The import of that phrasing should direct this specific debate in a manner that in discussion about youth challenges, where majority of the youth are the very ones who are being migrated into or smuggled into these countries, where <clears throat> it is these very youth that are suffering from the gross impacts of what this debate chooses to uh, uh, solve tonight, we cannot merely attempt such a question by just looking at it from the forefront. We need to get to the root cause of the problem vis-a-vis -vis the alternative provided by uh, my team. The argument that we provide in the alternative is very simple, and it is embedded in the preamble of the treaty that establishes the East African community. Uh, that is a paragraph two and paragraph six, which directly link to the importance of uh, developmental social dimensions that directly link to promoting employment, improving standards of living. If we do want to even propel the trade, that is a wrong presumption that they think that because we are youth right now, we all actually engage in trade. If I could ask a question here, how many of us have ever engaged in cross-border trade? The answer would be definitely a no. Thank you, I have a question. By, by saying create opportunities, do you mean between the countries or inside each country of EAC? Thank you. Thank you very much. What I mean is very simple. As a region that seeks to attain integration, then we have to be operating in a unison uh, form, format uh, that is the East African community. On the question of rebuttal, and here is what they have to provide to the House. But I will not. start with... Uh, Her question was whether we're solving the issues by, by the member states or the region itself, and my answer is very simple, that it's the East African region that is addressing this specific concern. In agreement that we have to foster integration, do you then agree that we need proper border management in East African community? Thank you very much, and that drives me straight to the wording of, a, uh, of, of, of the, of the, <clears throat> of the motion that limits me to the word prerequisite, that in the existence of prerequisites, the question should be what precedes the other, and that is where the winner of this day shall have tackled to attain that specific position. Of information, sir. Uh, you mentioned that the youth is not involved in uh, trade and economics. Are you aware that 80% of the startups in, e in the ESC community are for, uh, uh, youth? Uh, thank you. Our alternative strategy and how we are to that we are borrowing much more knowledge from the African Union and how it is. Then we can borrow that kind of information to domesticate it, to operate on what we have right now. He, the other speaker also commended that the One Stop Border Post Act is also being implemented very well. Point to note, fine, it is being implemented on December 1st. There was a, road that, uh, there was a One Stop Border Point that was being launched. But the question is, are we rich because of that specific position? How many of us have attained an increment in our GDP because of that increment? It goes back to one group, unemployment. Tackle unemployment, tackle a corruption, and then you will have a solution to take back home. And this is how it is very simple. The African Youth Agenda, uh, th th that is also branded as the Agenda 2016, also draws you down to the African uh, Youth Charter to explain a position that Africa wants its youth to take, and that is, and that is as simple as being at the forefront of solving the problem that uh, we, we, we suffer as youth in uh, the bid to attain social economic development to solve our problems in entirety. Thank you very much for listening to me. Good afternoon, everybody. Answering my own question, I would say yes. Creating opportunities means creating opportunities between partner states of VAC. Thank you. Then uh, I will develop like three points of my team. The first one is about life expectancy. 
As life expectancy is one of the methods used to measure health of a country, I, I prefer to use, as long as life expectancy is not low, the ESCP person states we have to have labor, workers, and be developed, developed economically. If young people do migrate diminutively, it will decrease the country's economy. So we do have to deal with the, the border management as the prerequisite issue. Political federation as protocol and so on. It's a process more than a, an event. Advantages of political federations are like social globalization. So, social globalization is, I can give just a few exa examples about social globalization. Like the USA, I read somewhere uh, Barack Obama speech saying that he do like, he do like, I believe, the, I believe that young people, as they are represent the big part of EEC population, they have to be concerned in everything. And I feel like border management is prerequisite because we are in a community, we, li we would like to develop all the six partner states and not Uganda, Kenya, or Rwanda part. That's why I would like to emphasize what our chairperson had just said. Border management must be the main problem solving right now. So the other point is about liberacy as consequence of ineffective border management into EAC and all over the world example. I, I read about Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is the first country in Africa having the highest. Thank you very much, madam. The, uh, you mentioned the United States of America yes. and this is what I want you to reflect on. Very few Americans travel to uh, African countries for the purposes of uh, <clears throat> seeking greener pastures. Very many Africans travel to the United States of America seeking for greener pastures. The question there would be, is it because of border management that many US uh, Americans prefer to stay in their countries? They can then propel themselves economically and socially? Or do you think it is because they have a border management policy that then they get to develop in that specific format? Thank you. Your question is out of the motion, but if one of... Okay, you can answer. I see. Thank you very much. In response to that question, I would say that the greatest economy of America has been built by migrants, and the migrant movement into that state has been facilitated by proper border management that has been built by the U.S. government. Thank you. Uh, you've mentioned social global globalization, yes. and in the words of our ESC motto, mm -hmm. one people, one destiny, yes. to contextualize it within our motion in respect to our youth, towards social economic uh, development and stability within our youth, our main argument has been, as she argued your second gen, that is, the prerequisite condition of, major, of uh, border management. Don't you think as one ESC, as you know, border management in itself should not be an issue because we, we intend there's already a policy that provides for ID to access borders. Don't you think the shift should not be on the management but on the root cause of the problems within the, the management and human smuggling and so on and so forth? but not on the management. The first prerequisite need be the root cause of human smuggling. Don't you think there should be a shift? Rebuting one attorney general of your team, he said that the corruption is the main cause of people smuggling in the IC, and I think it's not. I can mention like in unemployment, I can mention like the um, law of life, life expectancy, I can mention people looking for a better quality of life. So I think, first of all, we, can, we could look at the ESC like a community, like a family. We are trying to handle each other. I can mention uh, the, the case of South Sudan. South Sudan had the literacy rate, the lowest literacy rate in Africa, which is 27%. So I do think that as a family, South Sudan joined us, right? Then we do have to tackle that problem and and raise South Sudan social economic development. My last point is my people migrating. My last point is about unemployment as well. 
Migrating young people massively has a cause of unemployment rate in the availability of jobs and jobs opportunity that you have mentioned yet. I would like to explain the way you gave the job opportunity. Job, job opportunity just means Burundi, along with Rwandis to come and work there. And you all, you all know that work permits do exist right now, but I would like also to mention that that work permits have to be given in the rest country that didn't give it, that are not giving it, like Burundi, Rwanda, and Burundi, Rwanda, and South Sudan. That's another point that shows that border, man border management is a prerequisite for youth empowerment. Other, allow me to rebut the third attorney. He said, thank you. Okay, good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. Okay, uh, going directly to the motion, as it said that um, border management is a prerequisite for stability and social economic development for East African community and a concern to, for the youth. But before going direct to it, I have to rebut the first speaker who said that um, for the border management uh, as a prerequisite. So she was talking about the life expectancy of the people. So there she didn't mention that where uh, the border management is relating to the uh, life expectancy of the people and how is it the prerequisite. So it shows directly that she is going together with our team that she say that it is not about border management, but it is about life expectancy. So we have to find way forward to find what are the root causes of uh, this life expectancy. And another thing is, somebody answered the question, he said that, um, okay, uh, USA was, um, um, it's border management or other, th I think in case of border was made because of migrants, but it's not about the uh, border management or border security, but it's about of the resources that they have, for example, capital, technology, and other things. So they have to be sure of their, of their answers. Go directly to my point that I have prepared here is about information communication and uh, information technology development. So for the world to be in a better place, we do not much regarding in the uh, border management that we have to say is a prerequisite, but we have to consider that ICT is very important thing to be considered in an East Africa community because youth need to be informed everything is that is happening in the community. Each partner state should provide information to youth that this and this is happening in, the, in their community and they have to be updated and they have to get more information. For example, now the world is growing up and uh, the internet is doing everything for the youth. So youth need to be given more chance to engage into ICT and to get more information within there. For example, we can see that in case of entrepreneurship, people are most of the time dealing into inf uh, ICT. In case of people are, have to employ themselves using ICT and more of them. For example, Article 89 and 103 of the East Africa Community Treaty highlight the East Africa quest to improve ICT to foster effort toward economic development. Thank you. Thank you. In an instance where East Africa is suffering a migration flux, do you think border management should precede taxation crimes? Uh, but, okay, my fellow will answer that. Thank you very much. In uh, response to that, I don't think that uh, we should first look at border management before we first realize that when taxes are actually going to be collected, they have to be taken into a national gazette or a regional gazette where they can be planned for to cater for unemployment before that or even fighting corruption so that more youth can engage in trade in the end and then you can have your border management at that level. I would like to answer your question where you say that you didn't understand where um, low life expectancy comes in. But when you study um, border management extensively, you'll see that it entails border security and border control. In border security, there are different factors, um, like agri sector, sorry, like agriculture, and then we have health. We, in the Congo region, we've been having in some of the western part of Africa, we've been having some cases of Ebola and some of these pandemic issues. Okay, so thank you very that. much. So uh, that is because, because of high mortality and uh, mobility. 
So you have to make it to learn it clear. So going to another point is saying that improvement of health sector. So we know that border management, in the, it is not that prerequisite to be given more priority for stability and social economic development. One, once we want stability and social economic development, we have to see the situation of the people, the situation of the youth. What situation are they in? So we have to uh, improve the uh, health sector because youth can never go to university where they are sick. People can never go to the work where they are, they are sick. So we have to be much careful that maintaining good health, like uh, taking out HIV, AIDS, malaria, to be early pregnancy. This is a very problem in East Africa community. Education on sexual behavior, drug uses, and etc. So I need uh, the East Africa community to be more aware of it because youth is need to be empowered in every sector. And I give you example, dear judges, because the East Africa community, the Article 120, in case of social welfare. The whole article uses were not mentioned, but were mentioned in the Article 120. So we have to consider them more. It's not about social welfare, but there are other issues that uses need to be considered more. So look careful to the, to the treaty, the East Africa Community Treaty, in Article 120. It say that the development adaptation of a common approach to whether disadvantages and marginalized group, including children, the youth, the elderly, and person of, with disabilities. So we have to put much consideration on it and not basing on border management. So through the harmonization of national policy, legislation, strategy, standard, guideline, database, and regulation system, those policies should be maintained there, like pharmaceutical policy, food safety for youth and people in general, the quality policy, disease surveillance, university medical and dental schools curricula, sexual and reproductive health policy, and etc. So we have to be more aware of the, that. Youth is, are not supposed to deal just in case of burden management. These are not that much necessary, uh, except for their well-being, their health, which life are they living, and which way that they are facing because they are seem to have different problems, but the East Africa community need to, le to look at them in a broader way. Moreover, the East Africa community has three units in case of uh, improvement of health sector, as it's HIV, AIDS, unit reproductive child. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mujisha Derek from the affirmative side and I'm the council of the community. And my job will be easier because I'll be analyzing this debate and advising the community on which uh, uh, value that we should take. This is a value debate, so we'll be valuing uh, uh, making border management a prerequisite of uh, stability and social economic development in this uh, community or not. And ladies and gentlemen, let me uh, outline how I will be uh, advising you. First, I'll rebuttal all the uh, points they made, and then later I summarize the key arguments that we made here, and then I'll end on a strong statement stating the team uh, the, the line. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we first uh, interpreted or con contextualized this uh, uh, debate in a, matter, in a manner that uh, we defined border management uh, using uh, five, uh, five different definitions. One, border management is for secure, safe, and easy movement of people. Two, border management to, is to minimize risk of interstate conflicts and tensions between neighboring partner states. Three, young people as movers of factors of production and free movement of persons across ESC. Uh, fourth, migrant smuggling and human trafficking as a threat to young people and ESC integration. Fifth, and the last, is the issues of bribery and corruption at the border as a threat to, in, to security uh, of the community. Now, to rebut what uh, my uh, colleagues on this side mentioned, first, the first attorney uh, general made a, a, a point on corruption. Now, corruption has been exist in, existence, uh, in existence for a long time now, but it hasn't helped uh, uh, any, uh, anyhow. So now we're bringing uh, border management in such a way that it reduces corruption too. In what way is that? We put one-stopper border posts, which are ele electronically managed. It reduces corruption in that way. Second, the, the second uh, attorney general ma made uh, a mention of taxation. 
taxation fraud rate crimes uh, constitute part of the border management question we are addressing today. And then there is a correction on the third, from the third uh, attorney general. Uh, there is nothing there, there that is called Agenda 2016. You mentioned it and it's not ex in. It's uh, sir, I have a question for you. So what yes. informs trade? Is it the ability of people to have the resources to make them engage in trade or just the idea of the word trade just makes people engage in trade like that? Can I come again, please? Let me make it simpler. In your opinion, are you saying that today East Africans, youth in particular, a majority of us have the capacity to engage in trade, that the one border post is the solution? Or are you saying that we first have to build the capacity for us to engage in trade? Now, thank you very much. In response to that question, Right now in East Africa, the youth have the majority business startups. And therefore, the reason why we need border management is because they need to tap into the capital potential in different nations, and that can only be achieved by them having free movement into those nations. Therefore, border management takes precedence. Thank you so much. I can... Uh, we have... Uh, if that is the case, like he responded, I want, us, I want him to justify why unemployment is still so much existent in the East African region, or if it doesn't exist, you can also tell us. If I can respond briefly as well, it's only because we don't have proper border management. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll continue with my rebuttal. Uh, so we have substantiated uh, repeatedly that uh, the CMP or the capital, uh, sorry, the Common Market Protocol uh, is a legal commitment to the, to the partner states to, uh, to remove barriers of free movement. And the only way to achieve uh, that, we must have effective harmonized border management. Now, to the key uh, arguments that we mentioned here, the first speaker mentioned uh, the, uh, we, 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 um, we differentiated the key points in three uh, aspects, three approaches, benchmarked three factors. That's social, economical, and political factors. Now, the first, uh, the first speaker mentioned the uh, social factors. Uh, he mentioned uh, the, that border management entails awareness and sensitization of atrocities committed and, uh, at border point, uh, po points, which uh, this debate will be looking into. And uh, he mentioned that uh, uh, it has curbed the, 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 the fight or the, what I mentioned earlier in border management definition as uh, the, the minimization of risk of interstate conflicts and tensions between neighboring partners, uh, partners by setting up two uh, commissions. One is the Lake Victoria Basin Commission, and uh, two is the Lake Victoria Fish Organization. It has helped curb these interstate conflicts. Then the second speaker uh, mentioned uh, the economical part of, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the argument, uh, highlighting that uh, border management is a prerequisite to, uh, to having a st stability and social economic development uh, uh, and including the youth in it. Now the second, mention, the sp second speaker mentioned that building resilient infrastructure which promotes inclusive industry and free movement uh, according to Article 3 of the, uh, of the, uh, of the capital, uh, sorry, of the Common Market Protocol, which, uh, states, uh, which uh, allows the free movement of, uh, of goods. And the second point was the improvement of trade and transborder related logistics through constructions of one border posts and the, the I'll sum up uh, mentioning that uh, we, we had a, a great uh, debate and uh, I think we won because we have proved that it's a prerequisite for social uh, and economic development and stability in the ESC. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my role here is all about summarizing what my previous attorneys said and to refute or to rebut what my previous uh, speaker was saying. He said that border management is going to cover unemployment completely. 
he said that it's because, because we are having unemployment, it's because we are having the weak border management, and I don't think so completely. It's because there is no uh, job creation for students, there is no job creation for youth in general, if I can say. And the other thing about why we are having uh, unemployment is because the students are not, are not creative and innovation, and he failed to show how the border management is linked to that one, which is a leading cause to that. Uh, he really said the good point. He said that the main point to this debate is to say if border management is a prerequisite, is an important point, is it a necessary thing that we have to, to stress while we are working on the social and economic development of ESC and youth in concern. Uh, let me give you one example while building a house. You're building a house, you will need to, mo to make a foundation, that's first, and then the second one, you will need to arrange bricks, and the third one is you will need to insert windows and doors, and the, third, the, the fourth one is you will need to cover, to cover the house. Actually, that's something we need. So border management is also like that. If you do all of those things, it's like unemployment, you're covering unemployment first, and then you're you're, you're collecting the, the problem of corruption. And the other thing, you, you are ensuring that the security is something that we need in the, in the partner states first. And then border management is coming up as a painting. It's something that we don't need. It's something that we don't need. Uh, it's something which is not the necessary thing that has to be in place. Um, thank you so much. Uh, my previous speakers were talking about corruption. Cor if we mean corruption, we are saying that we need, first of all, to eradicate, to, to remove corruption inside the country, so that, um, okay, granted, please. Thank you. Can you please uh, prove to us that uh, uh, border management is uh, not a prerequisite to Thank having Thank you so much, I got your question. Uh, the reason why I'm saying that border management is not a necessary thing is because if we remove corruption, if there is no corruption inside an individual partner state, why would I need to migrate to the other, pass, to the other partner state? Another thing is this, if I remove unemployment in the, in the, in the country, why would I need to go there? Why would I need while I'm having one in my country? Then? Okay. Thank you. Can you prove to us that unemployment can't be reduced through proper border management whereby the youth can be granted easily the travel documents can, and move easily from one country I to another. I got it, thank you. Uh, the thing is this, uh, during unemployment, like let me give a case study in Rwanda. Uh, the University of Rwanda is giving scholarships. Is giving scholarships to students, which is an incentive, like they are motivating them. So a big number, the better point is that a big number is getting educated. But still, the big number is getting out, there is no employment for them. So the better thing is this, we need to eradicate, to see how people should get creative, how should people should create their jobs, rather than going to the border management. So there, if they are getting uh, educated, and then they are going to have some leadership skills and assisting skills, they are going out to create their their, 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 their jobs rather than going to the border management. There, the border management is not the effective one. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. In response to your question, are you aware that, that most border management policies are protectionist in nature? they tend to limit the number of movement within our borders. In limiting those movements, don't you think you are reducing employment opportunities of those youth whom we intend to equip with employment strategies like schooling in order before, after, in, after correcting the problem, we will have the, the need to, ha to have a proper stability within our youth. Thank you. Thank you, first attorney, to input. Uh, the thing what we are also saying is this, people should access and get affordable health services. If I'm not healthy, how am I going to work? How am I going to contribute to that? And how, actually, that's what we are stressing on. People should get access and, uh, and get affordable health services for them to help them. That management, border management is done, not ma the main point, but health issues is the one. And the other thing we said is about information and communication and technology. Uh, my 
previous speaker said it well, because youth need to get updated what is happening in the place, what is really on the stage, what do we need to know, what do we need to know so that we can stress on it. And the other thing we said is about insecurity and corruption. Corruption, I explained it well, but insecurity, we need to ensure that security in the partner state, in the individual partner state, then the, we, will not go, we will not need to go to the other country by migration or illegal human sm migrant smuggling. And that it's uh, actually it's the reading cause it's some of the root cause why people are going to to the to, to that migrant. So there, if we ensure that we are having a security in the individual partner state, then there is no need of of border management. So or if it's needed, it's not the prerequisite. And the other thing uh, for our team, we have this alternative strategy to address those causes of people to go outside or human smuggling or migrant smuggling. The first one is ensuring the creativity and innovation to youth. And the second one is creating opportunities within the individual. And the third one is making health issues accessible and affordable. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, debaters. We have indeed um, witnessed a very meaningful and focused debate this afternoon. We will now welcome members of the audience to give view of what they have observed and to add on to some of the points you have, and to expound on some of the points you have talked about today. The audience. And the audience is supposed to use 30 seconds and not form another debate. Uh, my name is Kizito Chua from Ard University. I have a question. Two alternatives. Mm -hmm. uh, before asking, I may uh, remind you about uh, these two scenarios. First is, uh, we hear uh, arrest and seize of cows from Tanzania, Tanzanian farmer, who are crossed the illegal from Tanzania to Kenya. You may correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's this year, not last year. Also, we hear uh, about arrest of chicks, more than 200 in Tanzania, that we are transported illegal from from Kenya to Tanzania for the reason that they were, they were not approved by TFDA. My question are, don't you see that border control is very important and sensitive issue for health protection for people in both countries? Second is, don't you see that if these people followed border cross procedures, which are very open, would not face those economic loss? Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. You will have to answer. He is not sure about the cows, but you have to answer the question. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Just wait. Yeah, I have a question. This question goes direct to the chairperson from Affirmative Team. That do you think that free movement of goods response? people can be the best solution to solve migrant smuggling and corruption at the border. Also on, on top of that, I have an addition that the second speaker from affirmative team has said that one among the problems which normally tend to occur, especially around the borders in East African communities, is about the issues of illegal, illegal business or illegal drugs. For instance, he has said that in some of the countries, for instance, in Kenya, some of the illegal drugs are allowed, but in Tanzania, some of the, those illegal drugs are not allowed. So, we solution to solve this. I have just come with a, a solution that law enforcement is still highly needed to this East African community in order to solve these problems. Thank you. Thank you very much for citing a problem and giving the solution. I think we should allow now for the alternative strategy to respond to the question that was asked by the gentleman. Go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. The gentleman raises a question on cattle rustling uh, along the borders. Um, tonight's discussion, however, 
uh, wants to first of all appreciate that we have youth in East Africa. Secondly, that they are majority in East Africa. But being the majority in East Africa, how is it their concern that we have border management or why should it be so <clears throat> that regardless of all the other problems that they suffer from, the first that they should be clearing on that list is border management. In our position, we were saying the cattle rustling is existent and there are, so, uh, there are solutions to curb the same that are existing. Uh, for example, what he said, uh, enforcement, which needs to be pumped up. However, we looked at the majority of, of vast problems that the youth suffer from and whether those create a dire need to first of all be worked on before we get to the minorities that also exist in the region. So we think that many youth are unemployed, they need to be uh, empowered, and to that effect, we shall not even be having cultural wrestling when people are rich. Thank you. Uh, any other last question? Um, there was another question from the gentleman at the back that was targeted towards the affirmative team. Two questions, actually. Thank you very much. The first question, the question was whether border management is the best way to curb corruption and smuggling. In it. Ladies and gentlemen, border management is a twofold solution to the problems the man has cited. One, corruption can be manifested in very many ways. And one of the ways in which corruption may manifest itself is through smuggling, is through um, exploitation of poor border policies, is through poor taxation exercise at customs, and all this can be best solved if we have proper framework to guide taxation and transformation of goods into one country. The aspect of smuggling, smuggling refers to transfer of goods or persons from one country to another through the use of borders. Now the only way to solve an illegality on a border is to have proper border management. Therefore that shows you that border management manifests itself as the best solution which should actually proceed any other factor in East African community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, there's more? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. On top, there is the speaker was asked about the illicit drugs. In Tanzania, when you are caught to those, those drugs, you, you are taken to the court and you have to answer. That's, there is law enforcement in Tanzania. How then is he asking which law does he want to enforce again while when you are caught with those drugs, you are taken to the court and you have to answer. Uh, I hope the DSG of that team has conclusively answer, answered your question. Uh, I see you're nodding your head in dissatisfaction, but we shall not give you another chance. Okay, thank you. I am Toki Joji from the University of Des from the Aris University. Uh, first, I would like to portray my congratulations to our affirmative team and the uh, alternative team. My question is that the affirmative team believes that uh, through improving the border management, it can enhance the, the socioeconomic development. My question is that, what do you think about the national priority? As you see, in Tanzania now, we are just trying to move toward the industrialization. Once we talk about industrialization, we need more raw materials and more goods to remain in our country. And in order to save costs, you don't need to, trans to, 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 to import a lot of goods to, to in, in our country so as to produce goods. So I think my suggestion is that in order to improve the socioeconomic development, the border management, it should, it, it should not be the, the first. Why the country should, the, the country the country in the case of territorial conflict and in case of checking the national priority, it should be the first one so, at, so that to, to improve all countries to move in the other way. Thank you. Yes, thank you for your very good question. Like, um, let us allow them to rebut or to respond. Thank you. You have spoke about the national priorities. The national priority of Tanzania now is industrialization. But how can you sell your goods if you don't manage your borders well? How can you export them? If through exportation you get the custom duties to the country. 
in addition to what was the response from my colleague here, you cannot claim to, you cannot set laws that are going to restrict the market to the own goods you're going to produce as a country. Therefore, the best way you can achieve the maximum realization of profits from the industrialization you're prioritizing as a nation is by exercising proper border management, where you shall have ease transportation of your goods and commodities from one nation, which is Tanzania, to other East African nations, so that you can realize the best out of the products. Thank you. Um, when you are talking about the national priorities, um, we are all aware that we are in, a, in the East African community and to be part of it, you have to sign and ratify the treaty and you, that, that means you are a partner and you subscribe to the treaty. And some of the integration pillars that we have for the ESC, we have the common markets, the custom unions and the political federation. So we should all put that into consideration. You should study on that mostly. Uh, thank you very much. I am of the view that we keep the next questions for the next cohort of debaters since it's uh, four and we have approximately two hours to six. I agree. So now we appeal to the interveners to give their point of view and to advise the teams. I want to correct something that came from the floor. Uh, from the debaters. I don't know which side it came from. Um, what I'm calling a factual inexactitude uh, to state that border management limits movement. There's a lot that border management spurs and the answers are right there behind you. I do not know why you're not using that big um, uh, banner, okay? And um, I will not list them. That's all I wanted to correct that it was not a correct representation of a fact. Thank you. Uh, on my side, uh, we are discussing here, and uh, we have seen uh, uh, some of you uh, diverging from the theme. And uh, you are diverging in a manner that, uh, let me put in this way. EAC is an entity, it's existing. Why it exists? Because countries agreed to come together to foster business, trade, find a common market. If you argue that border management policies are protecting, protecting in nature, then there is no need for, for integration. If they are protection in nature, no need for integration. Integration works well when there are legislations which foster trade, commerce, movements. All these movements are regulated by border management. Even in East African Common Market Protocol, Customs Union Protocol, you can operate them or operationalize them through border management spheres. Outside that, then even those common market protocols won't function here. So, you have to confine on that, that it is existing. But what's the role of the youths in this? That's where you are moving away. You want to include as issues like unemployment. Yes, it may be a factor. But it's a factor, not a factor taken as a regional problem. But you share the common issue that, no, we are the same. Thank you. Thank you very much, interveners. <coughs> One more appeal. Thank you very much. Um, uh, mine is uh, almost like what my brother has said. I'm still failing to see the connection between the theme, the variables, which is border management, um, and then socioeconomic development and inter, the interlinkages, what is supposed, the causal, you know? Border management to address migrant, uh, migrant smuggling and corruption at borders for stability and socioeconomic. We are scratching here and there, but we are not bringing out the actual, actual linkage. The affirmative group, they tried. They tried. Um, but I, I think tomorrow, with the other two teams, we shall expect 
really to see the linkages coming out. What we want to see is, for example, if you are talking of one aspect of border management, which is, for example, um, let me give an example of the one-stop border policy. You've been talking about it a lot, and I'm sure you all understand what it is. So if you are saying one-stop border posts, and our presidents have, have launched, commissioned this one-stop border post, how does the establishment, the functionality of this one-stop border post translate into quick clearance of goods and the resultant economic development? That is the linkage we may want to see tomorrow. Once again, I'm going to appeal. I think tomorrow should give us more time. We need to help these young people. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mama Frolens. Indeed, tomorrow we shall give uh, more time to the interveners to give us more of the subject knowledge of the ESC. Um, uh, for, I think uh, we have come to the close since there are no more questions and the interveners are done. Uh, thank you very much, the debaters, for the great well, work well done. We are happy that you honored the invitation and you have debate, debated wisely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have a five minute break, waiting for the debaters for the third round. That's the third debate. Five minutes.
May we please have the debaters of the third round coming up on stage. Uh, so I will ask the participants in the audience to take their seats too, uh, such that we can kick off for our last segment of the six ESC debates. After this debate, we shall begin to anticipate who shall be crowned tomorrow in the gala dinner to represent their countries as amb ambassadors in the sixth cohort. So you can always debate with the spirit that anything can happen right now. Thank you very much, Omar. For, for, for all debaters, once you ask a POI that is more than 20 seconds, I'm going to tap the bell to show that you are badgering. Um, welcome to the third round of the debate. To my left, we have the affirmative team, and to my right, we have the alternative strategy team. I will just remind them of the guidelines of time. The first two speakers have eight minutes each, four minutes protected time at the beginning, and two minutes protected time at the end. When the bell rings, unprotected time has begun, and when the bell rings again, it is over now. You're on to your last protected minute, two minutes. For the next four speakers, four from the affirmative and four from the alternative side, you each have six minutes in total, two minutes protected time at the beginning, and two minutes protected time at the end. Remember the guidelines of the debate. Remember to be cordial, and remember to be diplomatic, and to be respectful towards one another. And may the debate begin. I call upon the Secretary General from the affirmative side team. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Henry, Henry Tinomjun, and I'm the Secretary General of today's debate. I appear with my co-affirmatives uh, with the Deputy Secretary General Amani Esperance, uh, the Chairperson of the Council Irima Kinabo, the Amicus Cray or Friends of Court uh, Wangai Rashid, and then the Council of the Community Nishime Dus. Ladies and gentlemen, today we shall be discussing a very fundamental motion, which is this House believes that this House believes that the border management is the prerequisite of stability for East African community and the youth at large. Ladies and gentlemen, the debate requires us to discuss whether border management is the necessity or the, is the only necessity of the, of the requirement of development of East Africa. Before I delve into the, the nitty gritties of the motion, 
I will give the roadmap of today's debate. Uh, I will, as the Secretary General, discuss uh, what entails border management, the causes of mismanagement of borders, and the effects it has in its partner states thereafter. And then where upon my Deputy Secretary will discuss the political effects that mismanagement of borders have caused to the partner states. And then the Chairperson of Council will discuss the economic effects by giving us a case extension of the economic effects and a, a, a notch of the policies of how uh, the mismanagement of borders have affected East African states. And then the Amica School will expound on the policy introduced by the, the third speaker and by giving us the policy and explaining the policy of the House of how it has affected the East African partner states. And then the last speaker, who will be Council of the Community in Shimedus, will discuss and weigh the debate on why we win the debate tonight and giving us the advantages of having a border, of having a border management in East African community. Ladies and gentlemen, when I say prerequisite, I will use the Oxford Learners Dictionary, fifth edition, to mean a, a condition precedent or a factor or a very fundamental tool that has to be achieved before, before the start of any project. If you say it is prerequisite to buy land, it's very fundamental to have that land. It's a condition precedent. Two, uh, stability using the same source means without any disturbance in layman's language. Then, what do I mean when I say economic development? In defining economic development, I will borrow the words of Dr. Okum Wangui, who was the capacity building chairperson of Uganda, of sorry, of, of Africa in Addis Ababa concerning border management. In the paper she African community. Ladies and gentlemen, when I say prerequisite, I will use the Oxford Learners Dictionary. One, two, uh, immigration, three, customs at the border. Those are the grounds that she introduces in her definition of border management. So what entails border management? What's border? We have borders as air, we have them on land, and malintai on seas or lakes. Then that takes me to the, what are the causes of, mismanage, of mismanagement of borders? Having had to understand what borders are, what are the causes of mismanagement of borders. Now, dear ladies and gentlemen, the first and the major cause of mismanagement of borders is because we have, all East Africa has been eaten up by corruption in itself. Uh, I will use the, the UN report on the Horn of Africa concerning corruption in East, in East African states. It ranked Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Burundi as the most corrupt states in the world, among the most corrupt states. So, People can easily bribe our, our officials at the borders to bring in commodities. So corruption is one of the major causes of border mismanagement in East Africa. Two, I will look at the issue of uh, lack of clear boundaries. In that words, I will borrow the words of Helen Porter, who's a famous columnist in the London press. She wrote that for you or for a person to, to control a territory, the person must patrol and maintain that territory. East African states or East African partner states barely patrol their borders. It's from those grounds that even Kenya and Uganda are fighting over a very small island in Midjugar. We don't even know our borders. Failure to patrol our borders is one of the major causes of border mismanagement. Two, the third and the last that I will tackle concerning causes of border mismanagement is the lack of political will. Do our leaders or our leaders interested in protecting our borders? Oh, they have other fundamentals. Those are the reasons why we have border mismanagement. Thank you. You, a point of inquiry? I can take any. Part. Pardon? Can I? Yes, the question that I want to ask you, uh, how is the border management? legendary 
up to the social economic development of persons in all income levels involving the youth. Thank you so much. I was going to that. Actually, you have led me to my second submission, which was, how has mismanagement of borders affected? I have, I have two minutes. So thank you so much. Huh. So how has mismanagement of borders affected the partner states socially, which will be my argument today? And in socially, I will submit that through, uh, I will use the report first of all, the report, the UN report on East African borders, which says that through porous borders on East Africa, or East borders are led through human smuggling on East African borders. And a case in point is Uganda. On 1st December this week, a report in the New Vision, a Uganda newspaper, that another Ugandan youth dies in Oman. The youth did not have travel documents, but he died in Oman. How did he get to Oman? Through porous borders in our... So through the porous borders, youth have been smuggled to sex slavery, through slavery itself, working long hours without pay, because we cannot monitor how these people travel in and out of the country. So these people can easily be exported or trafficked or smuggled outside of the country. So smuggling, in defining smuggling, I will use the United Nations protocol against the smuggling of migrants by land, sea, and air, which define the indirect and direct extortion of money for the entrance of people in other states without travel documents and when those people are not residents of those states. So in this state, in this motion, youth have been smuggled outside East Africa into these states and these people have been exploited. Remember, the majority of the East African population are youth. And these are youth that are supposed to be providing the machinery, the knowledge machinery we need in East Africa, but they are being exploited abroad. So if we protect our borders, we shall protect these youth from outside without travel documents. Two, I will look about drug trafficking. East Africa borders are among the most porous borders. If I look, I use the, the United Nations Office on Drug Crime. Thank you so much. I will rest my case. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Well, my name is Thierry Nidimbere. I'm from Burundi. And I'm so excited to represent the alternative team uh, who's, uh, to the motion, uh, border management is a prerequisite for stability and social development for EAC community and a concern for the youth. Well, my alternative team uh, is made up of me as the first attorney of the of, of the alternative team, and uh, Mr. Mr. Jeremiah, Juma, Anita, Shelley. So we, as the alternative team, we are going to actually agree that border management is required, is needed, in order to achieve the stability and social development for EAC community and concern for youth. But we agree that it is required, but not the prerequisite. Not prerequisite. You know, we may have effective management of the border, but we cannot reach to the stability and social development or for EAC community just because there are some other uh, challenges that the EAC is faced with which when we are not, when we do not tackle them, we can actually never achieve this goal. Well, what we are going to talk about, we as the alternative group, we're going to give some other challenges that we should first tackle, what we should first tackle, rather than jumping them and think that we may be able to, to create the border, the effectiveness of the border management. What can we do? Actually, there is the high rate of unemployment across EAC. The EAC magazine states 
that Burundi, Tanzania, and Kenya, police and judiciary officials, they are corrupted. They are corrupted. Then, my opponent said that corruption at the borders uh, is actually alarming, and they support that border management can actually fight against corruption at the borders. But they don't think about corruption within the region, corruption in each member state. Because if the border agents are not corrupted, but within the countries, the government officials, they are corrupted, they can influence the border agents. And we all know that uh, the government positions are not permanent. They are actually not permanent. Today, you may be uh, a general director of a given institution. Tomorrow, you may be changed. So imagine to the border agents, those who are border agents today, they are not corrupted. But the rest of the community inside, in the different institutions, they are corrupted. If they change them, do you think that the corrupted ones, as they are new, uh, do you think that corruption will end at the borders? It will not end. Just Excuse because... Excuse me. Excuse me. Let us hear from the SG. I think he oh. has a point Thank of you so much. Uh, is it your submission today that corruption is a prerequisite for non-social development? And if so, what causes the other? Border mismanagement causes corruption or corruption causes border mismanagement? I'm not saying that corruption uh, causes the mismanagement at the borders, but I'm actually uh, talking about corruption uh, within the, the member states, within the different institutions in EAC, that they influence corruption at the borders, okay? So you only talked about corruption at the borders, but there is another corruption which is dangerous in different institutions inside the region. So if you only fight against corruption at the borders only, you will not make it. You will not make it because when those border agents are changed, they change their position and bring the other guys who are corrupted, okay? This means that corruption will continue. Then, the other thing that we can do as an alternative, as I have just said, is to fight against corruption within the region, not only in the border, the borders, but within the region, in different institutions. So the other thing we can do. One more point of information or question. Can you please confirm to this house that corruption at the border does not escalate corruption within the member states rather than the inverse? Corruption at the borders, it is influenced by corruption within the country, within the region, because you actually can corrupt at the borders when you were used to corrupting uh, in different positions you were taking uh, in different uh, institutions. So you can actually not uh, curb corruption at the borders when you don't uh, reach out to different institutions and different uh, government officials who are corrupted. We can also uh, tackle the political stability. Political stability increases the number of refugees. And refugees, uh, they massively run the country just for the lookout of uh, security. And when they are uh, running away their countries, they are not necessarily uh, passing through the legal way. And they are most of the time the victims uh, to, to, to human trafficking and the migrant smuggling. So how we can tackle uh, the unemployment as uh, the prerequisite uh, before thinking about border management, what we can do uh, to fight against uh, unemployment is simply to instill the culture of entrepreneurship and business. We want to promote uh, people across the country, ac across the region, to become businessmen and businesswomen. 
just because when they have what to busy themselves, when they have the opportunity to make money in their own country, they will never think about you know, uh, using fraudulent ways in order to, to cross the borders. What, something else we can do, uh, we can combat corruption by doing what? By grooming anti-corruption teams at the borders and all around the region. We can also ensure the continued judiciary independence. What I can say last is that... Please sum up, sum up okay. your point. Yes, uh, well, something else I can say is that you have been talking about uh, how you can uh, create the border management. The borders that you've been talking about are just the border control points. But what about those who actually uh, who actually travel in other partner states through the forest? What about those who cross uh, by crossing the rivers? So this means that you can... Thank you very much. First Attorney General from the Alternative sec uh, Team, we now welcome the Deputy Secretary General from the Affirmative Team. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Hope you're fine, right? So he's been talking about uh, political instability, saying that uh, border management is not really very important because even in the country there is uh, political instability. Then I come here to emphasize much on uh, political instability. Normally, political instability is there because there is uh, smuggling of arms in two countries, for example, South Sudan. And to emphasize much on that, uh, I mean, uh, in uh, how mismanagement uh, of um, borders can affect or affect um, political issues, I'm going to, to emphasize much on terrorism. As uh, the definition of terrorism um, that we see in the article of UN, it says that terrorism is the unlawful use or threatened use of force or violence against individuals or properties in an attempt to coerce or intimate intimidate governments or societies to achieve political, religious, or ideological objectives. So by there, I'm going to give you a typical example that we all, all of us, we know, in uh, Garis City College. What happened, um, there are, uh, I mean, uh, the tourists that we were, uh, tourists, I mean, um, terrorists that we all, we know, as Shabab people, I mean students. And from there, more than 70 were, um, were injured, and more than 700 were taken hostage, which means that how I can connect uh, those, um, I mean, um, uh, those, um, the people that were acquiring knowledge and some, um, Excuse I mean, me? yes. There is a point of information from yes. the fourth attorney general. Thank you very much. Uh, are you asserting to this house that issues such as governance have no, each, uh, have, uh, no place in what yeah. causes stability since you've told the house that migrant smuggling is apparently mm -hmm. uh, the, the only reason why we have instability? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, uh, that's why I wanted to show you a typical example about Burundi. Burundi in this year, 2018, there are some people that came from e I mean DRC that entered with arms and they killed more than 30 persons, which means that this is a great number that should be used, I mean, uh, helping ESC to develop. Did I answer you? Okay. Then uh, we give other typical examples of Nairobi uh, bumbling in 2014. But also, if you don't know your borders, it's going to be very hard for you to know who exactly you are. For example, there is an island called Mijingo between uh, Uganda and, 
and Kenya. That arises, I mean, political conflict because they don't know really where is belong the, the, the island, which means that if we should, we, uh, I mean, well manage our, our borders, that could help ERC to develop. In short, I can say that border management is a prerequisite to uh, for social, economic, and political development in ESC. Thank you. Um, you have now two minutes for protected time. Please continue on with your points. Yeah. Um, yes, I had something to say about um, uh, how much is very important to protect um, our borders. Because it, it, when, when you don't protect our borders, it will, it will affect much, not only for uh, people inside, but also for people outside. We all need tourism. We all need money here in ESC. How we, we, we develop if we don't have a tourist, I mean tourists in ESC? And we're talking about um, um, sharing knowledge. How will I go, for example, how will I leave Burundi to go to Kenya? And I know that once I, I will, I'll be there, people will kill me. Tourists will come, I mean, uh, tourists will come and, and, and the bomb, I mean, that's, that's cool. That's more important. And uh, talking about uh, employment, how will I leave my country? And I say, I'm going to invest in this country, knowing that something bad will happen. So it's more important if you want to, to, to invest in other country, I mean, uh, in ESC country, countries, it's more better to know that uh, borders are really protected uh, so that whenever I be in the other side of the country, I will be well. So to protect or to well manage borders is one, and it's very important, I, say, I can say it's the most important thing that we can do so that ESC can develop economically, socially, and politically. Thank you very much, Deputy Secretary General. The floor is yours, the second Attorney General from the Alternative Strategy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear judges, fellow participants, uh, current youth ambassadors from the partner states, good afternoon. Uh, I'm here by the name of Shaka Jeremiah uh, as the second Attorney General from the Republic of Rwanda. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to come uh, first uh, on the points uh, mentioned by the Deputy Secretary, uh, Secretary General from the affirmative side. Uh, <clears throat> dear Secretary General, Deputy Secretary General, uh, you said about uh, border management and uh, border, uh, the influence of border management to political stability, but you didn't convince the House about how uh, how uh, people from the Eastern uh, African community, partner states, will benefit from that. Uh, uh, here, I want to outweigh your, your argument uh, by giving uh, an example. For instance, uh, we all know the issue of Burundi and Rwanda, maybe. The issue of Burundi and Rwanda isn't precise or mentioned. We all know that. Uh, uh, both countries have uh, some political issues, but normally at the table, we don't know them. Uh, people in Rwanda, maybe like, let me mention like transport agencies that have been, uh, have been uh, working on the border of Burundi and Rwanda. By now, they have corrupts, they're not working. Rwandan people are not, are not free, they are not free to work in Burundi, yet we have many, uh, many refugees uh, across these partner states. You know, you didn't, you didn't bring the concept at the table how we all partner states we will benefit from it. 
uh, with your, uh, would this would make more sense and lead at the stability and socioeconomic uh, development of the East African people. Ladies and gentlemen, by now allow me to make uh, an emphasis on uh, his honorable attorney general from the Republic of Burundi. Uh, as he mentioned, corruption as uh, uh, the, most, uh, the most prerequisite uh, a uh, prerequisite for effective stability and socioeconomic uh, development. Uh, this is a big fact as it tackles all organs of the border. <clears throat> of the border, here we can mention migration, customs, security, or private sector. Uh, with Rwanda's leading daily, uh, daily, the New Times Rwanda, in its article, East African Needs uh, a Common Strategy Against uh, Corruption, published on, uh, in July 2018, in a survey that measured the bravery levels in the private and public sector in the East African uh, community. The East African Bravery Index states that Rwanda's corruption rate is at 6.6%, Tanzania second a rate of 28.6%, uh, followed by Kenya at a rate of 31.9%, uh, and uh, Uganda, 33%, and Burundi, 36.7%. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, here the most transparent manner in partner states should uh, be prerequisited for stability and social economic uh, development in East African community. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, allow me now to come on the concern of the youth. <coughs> Statistics shows that for the purpose of uh, the East African community policy, youth are the persons of the age between 15 to 35 years. Excuse me, sorry, yes. there's uh, a point of information. Uh, thank you Hello, so much. Sir. Which statistics are those? You said statistics show that. Which statistics are those? Uh, these statistics are from the East African policy. Yeah. Concerning the youth. I I suggest that you continue on with your points because Thank you are you. now on protected time. Thank you. This was measured in 2011 to 45%, meaning 48 million of the total population in the region. Uh, by this, I'll come up, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, with the questions. Uh, would it make sense if youth are more engaged to border management than health-related uh, problems within the youth, such as HIV, AIDS, adolescent health and nutrition? Would it make sense if youth are more engaged with border management rather than the gender discrimination that we're still facing in the East African partner states? Automatically, no. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with this, <coughs> with this, I would like to heighten my last point about identity. Once the wise man uh, said, tell me what are the prevailing set, uh, sentiments that occupy the minds of your young men, and will tell you that, uh, I will tell you what is to be the character of the next generation. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, the AGA Khan University made the report earlier, April 2016, in its key findings about, uh, about identity. East African youth constructs their identity along three dimensions. Those are, first, they are young. This ranges to 25 to 58%. Second, nationalism. This ranges from 24 to 44%. And thirdly, faith. This, uh, this ranges from 43 to 2.3%. Less than 5% of the youth, dear Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen, identify themselves as East Africans. And yet we're leading to one destiny, one people in social economic development in East African partner states. Thank you very much. Sum up, have you summed up? Thank you, let me sum up. Thank you very much. We now welcome. Sure. Uh, finally, as the, affirmative, as the affirmative suggestion that they've said, the alternative I uh, give you 10 seconds to sum up. Thank you. To finish up. We think that by now, East African youth well, we still have more challenges to be concerned with rather than border management. Thanks for your time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Second Attorney General. We now welcome the chairperson to the council. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Irena Kinabo, from the chairperson of the council, and I am hereby to oppose the 
the um, Attorney General when he says that corruption is the main cause for socioeconomic development, but it's, it is due to mis, mis, misuse of borders management that leads to corruption in the EAC. I am going to provide a case extension of the affirmative group on how borders management affects economically to the socioeconomic development of the EAC and the, and the concern of the youth. I affirm with the motion that states that this house is a prerequisite, believes, this house believes that borders management is a prerequisite for stability and socioeconomic development of the EAC and is a concern for the youth. Ladies and gentlemen, we know that, we all know that one of the ways for the government to get an income, it is through, it is through taxation. These taxations are, are collected through business, legally, business which are recognized. The borders management are, the borders management helps people to move goods and, and the people's services from one place to another within the region and also controls the movement of people in the borders. The common market in the EAC is a single market where there is free circulation of goods, services, people's labor, together with capital in a common agreement. According to the common market protocol, part C and D allows the movement of the people and labor in the article 6 to 12. They allow the movement of goods and labor in the member states, from one member state to another. Taxation that is collected will enable the EAC at large to continue developing, to continue developing programs that can help the youth at the population, as the population of the East Africa is 168 million, and the youth are more than 50% in our, in the EAC community. And women carry 70% of this cross-border trade, in cross-border trade. Um, let us allow time for the alternative team. From the improvement of the, of the border effectiveness, what is uh, the estimated rise in the taxation that will be collected? And what would be its uh, relative influence on the economies? Um, the taxation, the trade grows, according to the EAC document, it states that the trade goes from 4.1 billion in 2011 to 5.1 billion in 2015. Okay, and examples of programs that can be done after the collection of this money, it's the, um, such this, like this EAC debate program that is done after the co good collection of money that is, that is collected in the, through the trade, the cross-borders trade. And also through the trade, through good trade and in border management, the EAC has also collected enough money to continue programs such as the 50 million women program in the EAC. Ladies and gentlemen, borders management it, it is ensured through two ways in the EAC, such as the electronic passports, that is a is, the banning issue right now, that is already in process, and another one is the one-stop borders management that is already in process and 15, between, uh, 15 borders operation stops already 12 st one stop borders management one stop borders post is already operating ladies and gentlemen the, according to the agenda 2063 expects that by 2045 through the through free movement of, of people and goods and services, the inter-African trade will grow at 50%. Thank you. Um, have you summed up? Are you done? Yeah. There was a question from the alternative strategy. Uh, thank you, dear moderator. Uh, I would like to, to come to your argument stating uh, the cross-borders trade and taxation. Uh, yet in East African partner states, uh, we still ha we, uh, we haven't yet uh, got the, this common taxation policy. I will give an example, like maybe the difference in Kenya and Rwanda, uh, like maybe the uh, the VAT in Kenya, value added tax, 
uh, by now it's at 16%. In Rwanda, the value added tax is at 18%. How do you think uh, this difference in taxation uh, will, lead to, uh, will affect the cross-border trade? Thank you. Madam Chairperson, do you allow for the Secretary General to respond to the yeah. question? Uh, thank you so much, the moderator. The causes of uh, disparities in value added tax because we have different currencies. Uh, the weight of the currency in Tanzania is not the same weight of currency in Uganda, Kenya, and Rwanda. So if I may proceed to educate you more is that for us to have, and actually in, a, in its normal sense, we have common taxes. Just that on common taxes, we are supposed to be paying equal taxes in every time we are importing and exporting. We are talking about cross-border, not internal. Dear, Secretary, so uh, dear Secretary General, uh, taxes... Go ahead, uh, go ahead. Uh, taxes in the cross-border trade, I think they are paid in the currency uh, and the currency at borders as well. You get it. Thank you. 30 seconds. Yes. I was saying taxes on the cross uh, borders trade, they are paid in the currency of which the country you're getting in, you're, doing the, you're, you're about to, to, to get the trade in. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have something to add on. Ten so seconds for if, if that's on. the issue you are seeing, don't you think then we should be looking at what's happening at the border? Yeah, respond to you that's with that happening question. at the border. It's happening at the border. What, how do All you right. think it will? Okay, now let's um, allow time for the, I think the third attorney general can take time to respond to that question. You're welcome, third attorney general. Uh, honorable judges, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, this house, uh, and in fact, the alternative strategy team, I b believe that uh, 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 border management, uh, uh, effective border management is, is, is uh, uh, a, a factor for social economic development, but not a prerequisite for social economic uh, 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 development. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we, we should not be misled by the affirmative side uh, 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 the famous uh, common law judge late uh, Lodening said first things first that uh, before we go to, to issues of border management there are a lot of issues we should address uh, before coming to, 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 uh, 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 to issues of border management and in fact if we compare a, 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 a number uh, uh, of people uh, within the East African community using uh, 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 the borders present in fact and uh, 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 the people who, who ha have never even been at the borders, uh, uh, the population that has never been to borders is, 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 is alarming. So very few people use uh, 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 the borders we, uh, we have. So, so, uh, uh, so uh, our team is, is uh, 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 to point out the strategies uh, 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 that are to be blown up before we, uh, uh, we go to issues of border uh, uh, management and uh, some of the alternative strategies uh, 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 that we do propose uh, for, 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 for social economic uh, uh, development are such as a uh, uh, implementation mechanism of uh, of the policies uh, that we do have. Uh, example, uh, 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 development of agriculture. People are dying of hunger in East Africa. People suffer uh, health problems. So why should we go to borders while people die? Uh, the other thing uh, is, is, is that You're uh, we should also. Excuse me? There's a point of information yes, or a rebuttal. Do you submit that border man effective border management is not a strong economic development tool? I did you should listen very well. I did not say it is not. I said it, sh it should be preceded by other f uh, factors. Thank you. Uh, 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 some other uh, uh, issues that we should do is to adopt uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the global sustainable development goals uh, the, uh, as, as uh, proposed by the United Nations General Assembly uh, in, in in 2015, resolution number seven, uh, stroke one, uh, uh, that uh, 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 caters for issues of, of poverty, issues for, 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 uh, for employment issues. Uh, our youth uh, uh, get to migrant smuggling, uh, not because of, of, 
of ineffective border ma management, but because of, I would like of unemployment to cut you issues. Short. We are still on unprotected time, and there's a oh, question for you right uh, here. Uh, yeah, as he said, that, that uh, many persons have, have not already crossed the border. I wanted you to tell me how about fake product that always cross the border illegally and are killing people inside the country because of mismanagement of borders? Uh, uh, surely, uh, uh, it should be noted, uh, 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 but an issue, uh, an, an issue of, of uh, transfer of illicit drugs is, is different uh, to, 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 uh, to a population. Uh, uh, I believe uh, a number of people are doing uh, a transfer of this drug isn't compared to Lily, uh, people who don't do the same uh, deals too. Uh, I think I've answered. Okay. Um, I think there's another yes. response yeah. from... There is something team. I want to say about the question that she has just asked. Yeah, thank you. 30 uh, seconds. 10 seconds, please. Let's give 30 seconds, please. Respond. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, crossing the borders illegally or with some illegal products, Let's first see what is the reasons. What are the reasons why people engage in criminal uh, things, in the criminal act? It is just because they don't have some elementary things for their life. They don't have jobs. They are poor. They want to make money. So okay. I think uh, uh, for the proper management, if you find a solution to, to, to the real problem, I mean to the real source, to the real source which is a uh, lack of money, poverty, hunger. The border management will always be uh, poor. Um, I will let you continue with your points because oh, your you. unprotected time is oh, done. Thank you. Uh, 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 the other point uh, to be taken into border uh, uh, into consideration uh, 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 before uh, effective border um, management is, is uh, enhancement of uh, uh, of issues of realization uh, and uh, technological advancement. Uh, this is as per Article 4, Paragraph 2E of the Common Market uh, Protocol that uh, proposes uh, that uh, the East African community states are uh, to, uh, to enhance uh, science and technological development whereby uh, we, we will have modernization of our industries where uh, youth will, uh, will be employed and, and not get into migrant smuggling and, and issues of corruption and all those. Uh, the other thing uh, we should do is to, implement, uh, is to promote inclusive, sustainable economic growth, uh, full and and. Uh, Productive employment, uh, and this, in fact, is, is goal number eight of the uh, is sustainable uh, global development goals. Uh, I will give you ten seconds to sum up your points. Oh, thank you. So, uh, and uh, uh, and all this uh, consideration, uh, we should prioritize uh, issues of of, of employment, uh, agricultural development, uh, development of. Of science and te technology to create uh, a chance uh, for the youth, in fact, uh, to be involved in, in issues of uh, 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 development as, as a theme is based on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Third Attorney General. We now welcome the Amicus Curie. Thank you so much. It's interesting the kind of conversations we are having here today. My name is Rashid Wangatia, the Amicus Curie of the Affirmative Team. Now, number one, it's so interesting when we are being told that corruption is killing our country. The attorney generals, the first and second attorney general, came here and told us, and including the third attorney general, only expounded on two points, unemployment in East Africa and corruption in East Africa. Now, number one, the first one, the first attorney general only defined corruption, gave us a few statistics to prove that there is actually, I mean, unemployment. Number two, the second attorney general came and told us about corruption. It's interesting that they cannot see border management is one of the key factors that escalates corruption. I will show them how, and then I will give an alternative solution to our team. I will give them the framework, the policy upon which we are going to depend upon. That we are going to depend upon. Number one, they told us that corruption, unemployment in border, I mean, unemployment in our countries in these sovereign states, are actually the main cause of corruption. Now I will tell them this that, and they told us the solution is entrepreneurship. Now I'm going to tell them this that you see. It does not beat logical sense for me to empower a particular youth in this state, give him money, let him work hard, produce commodities, 
and when he takes his commodities or his products to the market, he, cannot, he doesn't have people to purchase his commodity because we have smuggled products so, being sold cheaper inside that state. He pays tax, meaning he's going to sell his products more expensively than those products that, have been, that are untaxed and have been smuggled. That would hence render this individual unemployed, increasing the rate of unemployment. Number two, corruption is not the, is not the major source of border management. In fact, I would rather say that Bo uh, porous border management is the main escalator of corruption in this East African state. Now, our solution, our solution to all these problems is not only based on East Africa as a unit or, as a, as a, or more as a, as, a, as a solution to the Confederation, but rather it is there to also assist the independent states. They talked about, uh, they talked about the youths being engaged in other activities which they consider so vital that they can precede, uh, that they can precede actually border management. But I'm asking them, what is the essence of fight of us? What is the essence of us concentrating on, on engaging the youth on the fight against HIV AIDS, which actually has reduced in number? Okay, let us pose for a question. Proceed. Okay. Thank you, dear moderator. Thank you. I, I would like I would like to come up to your point saying about corruption. Yes, we have emphasized on corruption because that. Uh, sure, you uh, you will manage borders, but do you think uh, you will manage borders where, uh, with the rate of 36.7% corruption at borders in Burundi? That's that's uh, the main challenge that you uh, you will face while managing those borders. I so you better precise on the on the corruption issue. Thank you. Later, Listen to our solution. Lead and to the effective border management. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your question. I'm here to show them that. In uh, that porous border management that is already taking place today is the main escalator of corruption. We are not saying that we shall stop corruption 100%. And in our solution, we are going to have a transitional process upon which we are going to solve this crisis. Corruption is there in East Africa. It is a fact. They have told us 36%. But you are telling them the main escalator of corruption in East Africa is unemployment. This unemployment is caused, and you see, the major unemployment is in the youth. They are telling us a number of youths are not, are not employed. They are telling them it's simple. Today, Youths cannot invest and reap from the investment because of smuggled products. I cannot, I cannot produce my products in Kenya, for example, and sell them in Kenya today if cheaper products are being smuggled from Uganda. I am rendered unemployed. That is the question. essence. I have a question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. So you've not shown us how corruption comes out there. You are talking about unemployment. Show us how corruption comes out. Your Honor, and the house at large, I don't know if I'm, I, I'm, I'm not sure if... I'm not sure if this house is actually here to rip me off or, or whatever. I've tried to explain, and I'm still explaining, that if youths in these republics actually engaging in business, for example, as a source of income, and in the engagement, cheaper products are being smuggled from another, EAE, another East African country, another East African partner state into this country, and they're being sold cheaper because they do not pay tax, they would render your business useless because you would not have customers to purchase your products. You will hence end up being unemployed. It is as clear as that. What is our solution? We have three basic and substantive solutions. Number one, legislations. We are, going to co we are going to change our legislation. We are going to harmonize our leg legislation. This is going to happen in three, in three basic phases. The first phase is assessment. We are, going to engage, we are going to engage the state actors of each sovereign and independent state. They are going to assess their laws through, uh, through strategic management planning. These states are going to harmonize their law in the second phase. They are going to come up with analysis. They are going to come up with data. And we expect that the data they're going to come up with is going to be in tandem with transnational laws and current uh, cross-border manage uh, cross management trends. In these laws, anybody who define, uh, during, the implementation, during the implementation phase, which is the third phase, if anybody, if any of the laws is considered not to be, uh, not to be admissible in any of the partner states, it has to be changed and harmonized again so that we are going to have a combative, a punitive measure towards these uh, cross-border crimes. Number two, our solution number two is change in institutional framework. Now, if it beats logic that if you're going to change, if you're going to have a change in policies or a change in law, then it, we must have also institutional framework that can be to assist us sustain these laws. This is how uh, institutional framework is going to work. Number one in our structure is that these institutions are going to be autonomous in their independent state. One of the institutions that has to, must be there in each partner state is a new, uh, it, uh, is a new, is a new, uh, is a new boundaries commission. They must be able to, uh, to do geo-referencing and geospatial planning, come up with new borders. 
10 seconds to sum up your points. Thank you. They must Ten. come up with new borders and be able to and, and, and number 2 we are going to have they are going to have financial autonomy. They are not going to depend on any they are not going to have the state their salaries determined by a particular body. Number 3 they are going to have sovereignty. Our third solution is going to, we are going to come up with what we call a zero tolerance corruption policy that works in China and Ukraine. That in this policy is all about morals and ethics. It's not about the law. It's all about morals and ethics because no matter how many good laws we have, without morals, we cannot sustain this law. Thank you. Thank you are very you with us? much, Amikas Kure. We now call upon the fourth attorney general from the alternative strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, today the affirmative team asserts itself on the points of taxation, terrorism, stability. It speaks of border management to solve the issues that are hampering social economic development in the region. Ladies and gentlemen, it says that the concern of the youth, ladies and gentlemen, today in the East African community is apparently border management. And uh, the former speaker came here and told us that apparently the only problem affecting trade affecting the economy, affecting the youth in trade is apparently the issue of smuggled goods. Now, ladies and gentlemen, allow us to look at uh, facts from the World Bank that present unto us unemployment levels, ladies and gentlemen, in um, the East African region of the youth. Ladies and gentlemen, allow us first realize, first of all, that the biggest percentage of the East African population is of the youth. Um, an example, Burundi has at least 51% of the youth. 14% uh, of those are unemployed. Ladies and gentlemen, now, the, the, the affirmative team comes and takes the assumption, ladies and gentlemen, that any of these youth have the capability to engage in trade, ladies and gentlemen, that can even go across the border, ladies and gentlemen. Now, in addressing themselves to border management, ladies and gentlemen, they assume that there is already um, a, an economic strategy within the countries, ladies and gentlemen, that can actually deal across the border in, in, uh, in, in advocating for inter-African trade, ladies and gentlemen, that can be beneficial both to the countries with which they are trading and also unto themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to submit to the House that before we can attempt to further inter-trade um, across trade across the region, which is important, ladies and gentlemen, and which, according to the status quo, the House itself affirms that between uh, 2015 and 2016, we saw a growth, apparently, in the trade, ladies and gentlemen, they showed us 4.1 billion to 5.1 billion in the status quo, ladies and gentlemen, which means that the current uh, measures in border uh, management are already working to a certain level. Ladies and gentlemen, allow myself continue to address to myself to some of uh, the points that the formative team came and gave here in this uh, presentation. They said apparently that terrorism is only, uh, uh, terrorism instability, ladies and gentlemen, is only due to, to, to migrant smuggling. Ladies and gentlemen, and, and uh, apparently smuggling of arms, uh, according to the DSG. Ladies and gentlemen, the instability that is within our countries, as has been shown by the Af uh, African Development Bank, is because the youth are unemployed, first of all, because they have shown, ladies and gentlemen, according to a search that they carried out uh, between uh, 1980 and 2010, that countries with a high youth unemployment rate had a greater instability uh, proneness, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a pause. To be a bit more practical, may she show us that the attacks by Al-Shabaab in Uganda and Kenya were actually as a result of unemployment in Kenya and Uganda? Now, ladies and gentlemen, they address themselves to the issue of uh, um, terrorism, and they say that apparently it's due to uh, border ineffectiveness. But ladies and gentlemen, we are addressing ourselves to, the, to, to some of the issues that are sort of beside the point, ladies and gentlemen, in this debate. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what is the alternative team saying? We are, uh, the, the, our motion says that apparently border management is a prerequisite and to social development, and it is a concern to the youth, ladies and gentlemen. We are saying border management is important, ladies and gentlemen. In the, in the status quo, we have seen border management try to be improved bet, uh, within one-stop borders. We have seen um, uh, measures coming into effect to take care of 
uh, issues such as terrorism, ladies and gentlemen, by the police, ladies and gentlemen, in countries such as Uganda. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are addressing ourselves to whether or not border management, ladies and gentlemen, is what we really need to have these countries actually come to a level where their social economic rate, ladies and gentlemen, is actually developing, ladies and gentlemen, and we are saying no. Now, let us concentrate on the issues within the countries, ladies and gentlemen, that let need to be... Let us allow one um, more intervention. Uh, One more. Thank you very much. Now, allow me to continue and say that this is what we are saying as the alternative team. As the third attorney general mentioned, that concentrating on the issues of industrialization, mechanization of agriculture, ladies and gentlemen, at a larger scale, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about the utilization of the present resources, ladies and gentlemen, to empower the youth so that they can be able to actually compete um, in uh, this East African youth, uh, the, the, the trade that they are advocating for, ladies and gentlemen, across the borders, ladies and gentlemen. Now, um, why are we advocating first for these things, industrialization? You realize that, ladies and gentlemen, an example uh, of a barrel of oil, oil is about to start being produced in, in, uh, in Uganda. One barrel of crude oil exported and processed will cost you just about $42, ladies and gentlemen. The price of one liter of oil is over 4,000 Ugandan shillings, ladies and gentlemen. Now. A barrel of oil contains over 42 gallons of oil, ladies and gentlemen. Now, imagine them affecting border management before we get to issues such as industrialization, which is supposed to increase the value of products, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you are continuing to do the same thing over and over, you, just, you have been seeing products being exported for much less than their value. Countries in East Africa have built themselves on agri an agriculture base. We are still seeing... Um, exports being put out and processed, sold for much less than their value, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if they are, effect, are, are proposing bo effective border management, uh, ladies and gentlemen, more people are encouraged to continue doing the same thing, hoping for a greater improvement, ladies and gentlemen. Now, here, according to the East African development policy. It is estimated, ladies and gentlemen, that if mechanization and industrialization promoted by policies enacted by the partner state countries, ladies and gentlemen, um, if it was effected, we would have at least 9.8 to 14 percent increase development in these countries, ladies and gentlemen. I would like, as I conclude my speech, to assert that it is important for us to address ourselves to the issues that are going to First of all, empower the youth because in making sure that the, the value for products, ladies and gentlemen, for these youth that we are advocating get into uh, the systems and be integrated, that as they get into the systems, ladies and gentlemen, they already be effective, ladies and gentlemen, enough for them to be able to benefit not only themselves, ladies and gentlemen, but also the countries for which they are working. Thank you very much. I think you have concluded. Let's move on to the next speaker. Thank you. The last speaker from the affirmative team. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nishimi Ariandus. I'm from Rwanda, and I'm the counsel to the community of today's debate. Allow me to use a wireless mic. Ladies and gentlemen, today, as I stand for the affirmative team, on the motion of today that says that this house believes that border management is a prerequisite for stability and socio-economic development of the East African community and concern for the youth. Ladies and gentlemen, actually the alternative has been here only trying to refute what we are saying but not giving any other proposition. Because the reason why we are here, as my team members have been explaining, it is because we are looking at the most issues that we are facing as the East Africa and we are looking for the better development of the society and how actually we can help so that the East African community and the youth can be promoted and developed. So, what the alternative team has been coming here and saying that we have more challenges, we cannot go to the border management because we have other challenges which we are facing. Which other challenges? We are expecting from the first general attorney to tell us those challenges because as they are the best challenges, it is the first thing that we need to address. But he failed to do that. They were like, only the other challenges, but as they failed to show us those challenges, Still, we have to first tackle on the border management because challenges will, all be, will always be there. But what goes first? 
Because if we talk about the economy, now we start from the border. If we want our economy to grow, it means we want to be to have an international economy. We want to go compete as even go uh, from the partner states. So we have to pass to the border. You see what the economy is for the stability as the affirmative has been saying, we've been talking about it in political, social, and economic. We've been trying to show you how actually through the border management, all of that tackles those factors of our development. And our amicus curate tried to show you how we should actually be, uh, be, at, be looking at it and try to, to solve all those problems. We now, now, allow me to go through time, allow them to yes. ask a question. Yes. Yeah, my question that I want to ask you is this. How will your border management tackle the issue of uh, those who cross the border through uh, the forest? Those Thank who you cross very the much. rivers? Thank you very much. As he's asking, and as I was going there, he's asking, how do we tackle? Ladies and gentlemen, which brings me here. They fail to understand what you mean by the border. When we say the border, it doesn't mean that they think that it's only about the cost. When we say the border, it means if this is country Burundi and this is country A, here in between is the border. And those one who enter illegally is the smuggling that we are trying to face, as we have been saying, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to go there to where a, they have there been. There is another question. You're still on unprotected uh, time. Actually, it's not a question. I would like to respond uh, to what you've been saying. Yes, the alternative facts have been given that would lead to uh, stability and social economic, uh, uh, social economic development in EAC, except from uh, border management. Uh, like, let me mention the uh, inter uh, identity within the youth. Uh, the identity issue when it is engaged with, uh, uh, with the youth, uh, here we mean uh, more uh, integ uh, integrity morals of being as honest. It, as, as time is running, as you are not being clear talking about identity, if it was a main issue, I think it, it should have been the first thing. So before I go to the points they have been saying, let me first start even something posted on the website of the East African, Un uh, uh, the East African community, www.eac.int. It said that the ability to address migration issues is a fundamental requirement for responsible national governance, effective international relations, and full participation in international and regional institutions. Why do you think that they are doing that? It is because actually they have looked at it and they know that it is important. Starting from what they have been saying, they started uh, from the first uh, general attorney. He said that political stability increases refugees and most of the times they are entered by illegal way. Yes, this is why we are trying to tackle it. They enter illegally, illegally through the battle management. But if we tackle that, then the, that will be reduced. And then the second attorney came, gave us most of the statistics, but statistics without linkage and how it correlates means nothing. Thing, so it's not taken. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, he came and said that, that we have to face the, that we still face gender discrimination, health issues. But ladies and gentlemen, do we start from gender discrimination from health issues? Not clear. Ladies and gentlemen, then uh, the third, the third general attorney came and told us that people are dying of hunger. How many people in East African community are dying of hunger? He failed to show that. And if so, don't you think that if Uganda has a high production, then we need that production to be brought in Rwanda. Is it going to flood? It's going to pass to the border. But if we have border problems, then we won't be having that product perfectly. But if we face that, actually the hungerness, which you failed to even show how many people are dying, the hungerness will be reducing. This is what we are tackling, ladies and gentlemen. So please, don't let us go beyond the box and see what is important. If we talk about the economy, we need to project. We need to go higher. We need to look at the factors. And after we see the factors, it will come down to even the issues they are stating, as they will, be, will even be working together easily. Ladies and gentlemen, now the fourth uh, attorney general came and talked about youth are unemployed and that we say that uh, border ineffectiveness, yes, we are saying that there's border ineffectiveness. This is why we are here. This is why we are telling you that if border works better and is effective, then we'll be working better. Then she also said that uh, the selling on much less value, then we should be having mechanization of agriculture, agriculture, industrialization. We should be using the resources which are here. But are you saying that the resources we have is enough. No, it's not enough. This is why we trade between the partner states. And if we trade, we need those trading, those products to go uh, betterly on the border management. If it's not addressed, then we are not going to face that. The interest industrialization, we need to export. If we need to export, we need to go
was through the border. So we need to tackle that. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And please come to the affirmative team and let's tackle the development of the youth of East Africa and the community. Thank you. That was the last speaker from the affirmative team. We now call upon the fifth attorney general from the alternative strategy team. Members present, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, so I'm from the alternative side, and I'll, I'll address the issues which have been given by the affirmative side. Uh, we have the issue, they've said about the issue of uh, terrorism. I'm asking them, how do, you, how do you deal with terrorism when there is uh, political instability in your country? I, I, I find that uh, terrorists will take advantage of uh, the issue in your country if there is political instability. Again, they have said about corruption. So if you deal with corruption at the borders and there is corruption inside, how do you deal with that? Because corruption inside, these people send officers to the borders. These are same employed people to the borders. How do you deal with that? Huh? How do you deal with that? So yeah, you should address the issue of corruption inside first, and then you can be able to deal with it from the border. And then they talked about um, uh, employment, about uh, employment. OK, migration, migration smuggling. Uh, migration smuggling can uh, um, unemployment lead to migration smuggling because you, you, expect, you expect me to, to, yes, you expect taxes lower in uh, another country. What will I do? I'm, um, maybe I'm from this country, which has higher taxes. I will, which has higher taxes. I will obviously go to another country, go trade there because I know I'm, 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 I'm advantaged. Yes. So I will take. I will go to another country. That that increases the migrants in another country. So the issue of uh, demography in another country will increase. So again, we have um, uh, unemployment. How do you solve unemployment? inside the, the, the state before going to the border management. Uh, we should uh, increase industrialization, which creates jobs for the youth. Then, we, then we'll be able to solve border management. Then we don't have an issue with border management. If we have jobs inside the country, what? We are now on unprotected time. We will allow some point of information. Uh, thank you so much. You said we are tackling terrorism when we have political instability. How do we deal with that? Yeah. Thank you so much. We are trying to show you that through porous borders, good uh, arms can easily be struck, can easily be smuggled into a country which causes political instability. If case study is South Sudan, most of the weapons being used in South Sudan war are smuggled through porous South Sudan borders. Thank you. And my and I want to answer you on that. How do you deal with with uh, um, with arms smuggling of arms when your country is not stable? How do you deal with that? When to pay for your transport, mm -hmm. you'll be trafficking, you'll be entering in the, in the other country illegally. That you're passing by the border. And once you reach there, it means that it's, it's gonna be very hard for you to, to get the job. That's corruption, you'll be corrupting. And so how, how will you manage this? And that's why I say that leads to migrant smuggling. Migrant smuggling. I think I answered. Mm -hmm. One more. Yeah, thank you. Also, yes, of course, they will take advantage because, first of all, the border will, be in, will not be effective. And something else, you're talking about industries, but once you get the raw materials for the industries, so what will they pass? Oh, you have all the resources you need for in the industries. Because you cannot tell me border management. Can you disprove that? Okay. Uh, with, with that, to solve that, we could uh, mechanize agriculture. So, do we still have time for another member to answer? Okay. Okay. Um, so our 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 group, our uh, on the alternative side, what we say is the problem uh, facing economic and social welfare of a country are entrenched, and that border management cannot be a single solution to the to the problem, rather than let's develop more dimension, dimensional approach to the external.
resources. Let's improve on agriculture. Let's uh, improve on industrialization. How do we, how do we uh, reduce corruption? Uh, by stabilizing the country, by dealing with corruption inside first, then we can deal with the border. And uh, uh, yes, and border, man border management cannot be a, a single solution because we have drugs. What are you going to do with the drugs? So let's uh, deal with that first. Let's deal with what is uh, what's the problems inside the countries. Then we can go about the border management. Or if we deal with what's uh, hindering the country, the youth, the youth um, actively, then we, border management is an automatic, uh, automatic uh, problem that will be solved. Thank. You. session, but before we come to the end of our session, we open the floor to our audience. They can ask questions, they can come up with views, or they can give their own input on the matters at hand. Eddie from University of Dar es Salaam. I'm the finalist. Then um, the debate was so much interesting and after all I have something to the, the side of our affirmatives. Um, I failed to understand one thing that what do you really mean when you speak of free movement? really know it is located at, uh, is there on Lake Victoria and also is in between Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda and what took place at that time, I think you really know. Then when we look at the border protection policies, whereas in East African countries, every country, its policies and laws, they vary from one country to another. And now you're coming to tell Dollars. So what do you really mean when you speak of this uh, free movement in East Africa? Thank you very much. I will give time for the affirmative team to respond to that question. Thank you so much. My name is Franco Makabuta from Okay. My name is Franco Makabuta uh, from IFM Institute of Finance Management. First, I would like to congratulate all of you for what you have done. It's a great thing. But I've been observing uh, one thing which uh, all of you, you didn't speak much about the laws and the implication of youth. I think from the motion there, the big issue here 
is corruption. You know, corruption is the one who drives the mag ma uh, migrant smuggling. There is no migrant smuggling if corruption is not there. So what I advise we, the youth, the first thing we, we are supposed to be patriotism to our nations. That's the first thing I would like to advise to us. And we must know our history of this East African uh, community, where we been come from, where we are, and where we are going. So by knowing that, we can use that knowledge to create more awareness to the other uses. For example, if you see here today, this is the East Afri African community youth debate, but there are a lot of gaps there. It means that most of the people, they don't know if there is a certain big agenda which is going on here. So I would like to advise we should not be selfish. We need to provide us others knowledge. I mean, we need to provide others uh, awareness concerning about this East African community uh, youth. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, he has advised that in the 26 word resolution, the key word was corruption, and he has advised that you should not be selfish. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, a very commendable debate discussion. I just had a minor sort of clarification, and it sort of entails between clarity and a question. Uh, I would like to ask the affirmative team, um, from your angle of uh, border management towards socioeconomic development, uh, what uh, do you envision as a key area that young people can ensure to focus on to ensure that if we harmonize uh, uh, the whole aspect of border management, we can have peace and security within the region? Thank you. Allow me to answer you. Number one, the affirmative team was so clear on its policy. We had a very good resolution that number one, we are going to have legislation. Number two, we are going to have more combative legislations. Number two, we are going to have a better institutional framework. And number three, we are going to come up with a zero tolerance, a zero tolerance corruption policy. Now, on number one, when you talk about the policies, or rather the combative legislations, we realize that we have weak legislation so far. The legislations are there, but implementation of these legislations cannot be effectively done. And even if it's done, it does not show, uh, it does not purpose to stop anything. And therefore, it was our resolution that, number one, we must have an assessment because the legislation must take place in three phases. I will give you, just sum up your answer. So, we are going to assess another revitalization, an assessment to confirm what really is wrong with the legislations at our border. What really, we need a data analysis of all our borders. Number two, you must have uh, a new border management committee. Number I, three. I think you should stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any more questions? I think there are um, no more questions. There's still one more question. Thank you for the chance. Um, I've got a supplement question from, uh, from the answers that have been given by the last speaker from the affirmative. And um, um, he, he, he just talked about uh, uh, the question of legislation. So my question is, how can you uh, think about framing the piece of legislation under the current regime, uh, which EAC have got a, a kind of court with a very limited jurisdiction. How can it, yes. They are requesting that you repeat the question. My question is, uh, the East African uh, court system have got a limited jurisdiction in entertaining its affairs. So. Uh, and the last speaker did, speak, did, did talk about uh, uh, legislation. So my question is, how can this be working in the current uh, or in the existing uh, regime 
uh, on which we have uh, courts with limited jurisdiction. How can those pieces of legislation, uh, legislation that we are, we are talking about can be working? That's my question. Is in short, asking that why has the last speaker not spoken about the East African Court of Justice? No, that's not what he meant. What he meant was that the East African Court of Justice has limited jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Yet we are talking about registration. What you said? We are talking about legislation, which is we are trying to say that we shall create laws as East African partner states. We have the 